So dance with me today to Fasting Inferno. to the Intermittent Fasting Journal, Episode 9, Week 9. And I am Donna Reich of DonnaReich.com and also uh, the Intermittent Fasting Journal Facebook group. And so whether you are on here live today or you are on the video or you are on the podcast or you received the blog post which contains the outline, the video, and the um, podcast, welcome. Um, I am excited to bring you some more results and also excited to do some more teaching because teaching is what I love to do. It's five o'clock. I hope you in the afternoon. I hope you guys are in fat burning mode. And if you have already broken your fast, I hope that you um, are feeling great. Either way, I hope you're feeling great. Um, but I hope that you are having a good intermittent fasting day. Uh, I started out my morning teaching kids. And I teach kids from uh, ages 8 up to 18, uh, language arts and writing. And now I am teaching adults about intermittent fasting. So uh, teaching isn't my great love. Uh, and so to be able to teach from 8 to 78 or 88-year-olds in one day is amazing. Um, on Thursdays, I actually teach preschoolers, too. So I have a couple of preschoolers uh, well, they're not really preschoolers. They're like kindergarten level. So anyway, love teaching. Glad you are here today uh, with me. First of all, what I have been doing on my week uh, nine of my journey. Uh, I told you last week, I'm last couple weeks, I'm using the app. So I'm averaging 20 hours. And uh, for those of you who want to learn about varying your eating window, stay with me because I'm going to be talking about that today. Uh, but one of the things I do love about the app is the ability to uh, see my average for the last seven days so that when we do have special circumstances, truly special circumstances, if you're on the Intermittent Fasting Journal Facebook group, I talk about this a lot. I know I harp about this. And, you know, I think I harp about it so much because I homeschooled for 32 years, seven kids. They're now 19 to 35. And we literally, I literally had to tell them, like, all the time <laughs> you know every day can't be special every day can't be special now I was a special kind of mama you know do special things make things special but um, if your kids you know they're kind of like that whole that old saying if you give them an inch you'll take a mile and even though my kids were sweet you know if they thought that they could say you know can we not do this can we not do that can we skip this can we skip that you know because you know mamas get tired and sometimes they give in you know <laughs> and so I would literally have to say to them all the time Every day can't be special. No, we're not skipping math today. Every day can't be special. No, we're not skipping chore session two or whatever it might be. So I think that's why I'm so big on this now and why you have to hear it so many times. I'm sorry about that. But um, you get my past with me, right? And for 32 years, I homeschooled. And then for the last 20 years, I've taught homeschoolers and uh, homeschooling parents. And I've written books for homeschoolers. So you get a little bit of all of that in here, too. So the the app does help with that that average, and it lets you see you know, on the truly special days when you might have a 14 hour fast or a 16 hour fast, um, especially this holiday season. It's important. Uh, the app helps me to be able to average and to see I am getting my 20 hour average in. Um, <clears throat> I uh, talked about adding some low carb days. I think that was last week just uh, here and there to keep my carbs down during my eating window for one or two or three days of the fasting week so that the next day I go into ketosis faster. And there are ways that we talked about that last week. There are ways that was in episode eight, I believe. There are ways you can eat fewer carbs during your window. Sometimes you can extend your fast longer and have a shorter eating window, and you can exercise. Those are three ways that you can uh, put your body in fat burning faster. Um, but for me, it's more offsetting the holidays right now. 
so that is a little bit about that. I'm going to talk more again next week, I believe, about that on Christmas week. The Christmas week will be week 10 of my podcast. All right, listening and reading everything I can get my hands on. Uh, starting to outline my book. I don't know if you guys know that uh, I've written 100 books for homeschoolers, uh, language arts, grammar, and things like that. My husband and I wrote a parenting book, um, and now I am doing something completely different than what I have because most of my materials are instructional. Uh, I have 50,000 pages of instructional materials for homeschoolers and Christian schools, and now um, public school teachers over at Teachers Pay Teachers, and uh, so this is exciting. Next week, I'm uh, I'm I'm actually starting to outline right now uh, my intermittent fasting journal uh, book. So I'm excited about that because it's something different than what I have been writing, and I love teaching and writing about IF too. Um, staying strong. By this time, um, a lot of times, many people in other diet uh, circles, and definitely you know in my experience. You know, it's like, oh, it's, 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 I may as well just forget it. You know, it's too close, close to holidays. I'm just going to wait and do my New Year's resolution. Uh, that's not the case with IF. We can stay strong the whole time. And shortening eating windows as needed. I'm going to, when I talk about the what I'm learning, the listener lessons today, I'm going to explain a little bit more about varying the fasting window and what that looks like in practical time. Because I know a lot of people are like, you say, I don't have to eat at the exact same times each day, and I, my fast can be different, different days, but how do you do that and still make it come out right? So I'm going to talk about that in detail today. All right, my results. The week week nine, um, no weight loss um, with three Christmas gatherings during this week, um, but I'm still at eight pounds in nine weeks over Thanksgiving and a vacation and a, a holiday week, um, the first holiday week. So I am super excited about that. Um, just, you know, at a time when people struggle so much not to gain weight, to be in this position is just unreal. I'm so excited about it. Um, and enjoying holiday foods. Uh, you know, I thought intermittent fasting couldn't get any better when I started getting, getting to go out for dinner and eat foods at the restaurant instead of bringing my own. I always carry my little lunch bag. Uh, with low carb foods, so I always had in there like my low carb bread and um, you know maybe some cheese, some nuts, whatever to to round out a non low carb meal um, and to keep from eating whatever was there, whether it was bread or breadsticks or tortilla chips or whatever. I brought my own chip, my own flax chips to the Mexican restaurant and so forth. And I thought it, that intermittent fasting couldn't get any better than it was with the um, uh, ability to be able to eat out. That was just so exciting to me. So I thought it couldn't get any better than that until Christmas season came. And I realized that I could have my favorite things. And it's okay because I don't want everything anyway. I'm picking out because I only want to eat what I love. So that is uh, kind of what I've been doing and my results. So the bulk of my uh, podcast slash video cast is always what I'm learning. This is uh, lessons for listeners, too. So um, what IF looks like for me, people are asking a lot, you know, what does it look like in, in this 20-hour average, you know, fasting window that you're talking about? What does it look like? And I thought, well, this is a good week to do this because I have a really good example of a long window. I usually have an eating window of two to five hours in length, um, but this particular week I actually have one that is um, a, a window that is like from two o'clock until eight o'clock or nine o'clock. So it's more like six or seven hours. Um, so anyway, so I'm gonna just walk through this and teach it as I tell you my schedule. So this is a unique week because it was a holiday week. It was actually a birthday party week for our grandbaby who is one it was and then two christmas get well three christmas get together sunday before this week began i had one and then i had my granddaughter's first birthday and then i had a christmas gathering on friday and a christmas gathering on saturday uh during this week the week of december 18th so it is no wonder that i didn't lose weight right <laughs> but still i didn't come out i came out in state i didn't come out 
kicking and screaming and you know all this the holidays just they're they're killing me i just cannot do it during the holidays that isn't how i came out i came out victorious right because it's not just whether you lost weight or not as to whether you are victorious it is really the process and how you feel about that and also the lack of weight gain is a big deal to me during the holidays also all right so uh starting out with monday um fasting from Sunday at 6. So the first thing I want to say about this is that if you want a varied window, you have to look at when you're going to open your window the next day and the next day. So I try to look two days out if I want to vary things for special occasions. Keeping in mind, every day can't be special, right? But so when I'm going to do that, I'm going to do it such that I look at the next two days. So the next day on Monday, we were having Bella's first birthday party. And so um, I wanted to fast right up until the party, knowing that I was going to have, um, uh, my husband and I make these homemade raviolis. They're not really homemade, just we just use the raviolis from Sam's um, and make ravioli dishes, a white chicken one and a red beef one that our kids really like. So we do that um, a lot of times when kids, when the kids are coming, we do have seven grown kids. And so we have a house full of people. We often have, you know, 15 people here um, once, once a week or so with everybody home. It's so much fun. Um, so I look at that next day. And so I also say, okay, I have all of these get togethers this week and I really do have special occasions, right? Not just you know, oh, they're having a potluck at lunch. Oh, my grandkids are here eating lunch. I'm going to go ahead and eat a peanut butter sandwich. Oh, you know, um, Friday, uh, you know, we're having, um, um, getting off at noon and going shopping with my daughter and going out to lunch. And then Saturday, I'm taking my stepmom, um, taking my stepmom to lunch. So I'm going to eat lunch with her. Not that kind of specialness. The kind of specialness that truly is special. Not where... You look at your week and you have four or five times that you need an eight hour eating window when you're really trying to fast 19 or 20 hours. So I knew that I wanted to just open my window at the time the party began because I knew that I wanted breadsticks, ravioli and cupcakes. I, I knew that I did. It was my it was her first birthday and um, I knew what we were having and I planned for it. So I made that into a long fast. So I stopped as quickly as I could on Sunday. That's new. <laughs> which happened to be, um, I thought I turned that off, which happened to be uh, Sunday at 6. So I stopped Sunday at 6 and fasted until Monday at 6. So that was when uh, the party began, 6.15 or so. So I knew that I had a 24-hour fast, right? That's one good way that you can burn body fat is by going as long as you can whenever you have a special occasion or when you know you're going to be eating more than normal. Still not counting calories, not counting carbs and all that, but yeah, just being aware. So uh, that was a 24 hour fast. All right, then um, I uh, the next day, I was, I was done at eight. So the next day I fasted until five. Again, I'm trying to pad, if you will, my fasting hours, knowing that I've got some a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, three events. Special events, not every Friday and Saturday, but this particular one. Uh, so, um, so I fasted 21 hours then. And uh, then my husband and I went to the Mexican restaurant, and I ate some peanut M&Ms, because that's what I do now. I eat peanut M&Ms. So, <laughs> um, it just used to be, I like peanut M&Ms, and they, they, I like them a lot, and that's just a, a, a treat that I like to have. Um, and it is also, and I know that this is kind of a little bit of a, of a leftover from that whole, you know, trying to be keto, trying to be so low carb, don't eat anything store bought kind of thing uh, that I'm still, that I'm still, um, so maybe I'll just like peanut M&Ms for the rest of my life, but probably I'll move on to something else. Anyway, uh, so then Wednesday, um, so then Tuesday we were done at the Mexican restaurant. I ate a, a little bit of some peanut M&Ms on our way home, and then I was done, 7 o'clock. Again, still preparing for the weekend. And then the next day, um, I, so then I had a 21-hour fast, and I opened the next day with cheese and crackers, a homemade hamburger, half of a bun, air fried french fries, salad, and a leftover cupcake from my daughter, my granddaughter's birthday. 
Thursday. Now, by Thursday, I'm having to get ready for a Friday lunch. It was not until 2 o'clock, but I still had to get ready for a Friday lunch and a long eating window because I was going to eat twice. I don't eat two meals a day. Um, in my fast, uh, I go along with Jen Stevens's Delay, Don't Deny, and that's in the resources. I go along with her Delay, Don't Deny um, protocol, so to speak of what she determines is OMAD, or what a lot of people call OMAD. One meal a day, eaten within a one to five hour eating window. Um, and in her book, she defines it as an eating window of one to five hours in which you eat one meal and a snack or dessert or whatever with that. So um, that that is, I talked about that in a previous episode, how those parameters are just another way without counting carbs, without being keto, without counting calories, though, those parameters saying, you know, OMAD is a snack or an appetizer or a salad or a soup. It is a meal. And then if I want a dessert. And so just keeping in with that one meal a day uh, protocol, I um, knew that I was going to have two meals, which is extremely unusual. I've only done that. Um, in 10 weeks, maybe twice on vacation and once over Thanksgiving. So um, uh, I really believe that we can make this a way of life, that we don't have to make exceptions all the time. So um, I started, I fasted from Wednesday night at eight until Thursday at four. I'm moving it back to get ready for that two o'clock eating that I'm going to have on Friday. Now, this sounds way more laborious than it is. And with the app, it's really not hard at all. You just click, you just hit fast, start fast, stop fast. And, but I'm just saying that if you want to average a certain number, this is how you can do that. And if you want a varied eating window, some people will say, you know, a varied eating window is way overrated. I don't really care. I'm just going to eat from four to six every night and forget it. And then they won't do any of this. Right. This is completely optional. This is a way to be able to work in, especially those who have big families or they have a lot of events and stuff like that. This just is a way to be able to vary your window. So then that set me up so that I was ready for Friday. Um, I fasted from Thursday at um, five. I just ate for one hour on Thursday. I fasted from Thursday at five until Friday at two for a birthday lunch, which was um, 21 hours, I did my math right, I told you I was language lady, which was 21 hours, and then I was ready to go to lunch for my daughter's 30th birthday. There were uh, three, two daughters-in-law and two daughters and I and a family friend. So we all went out for lunch for her birthday at two. And then we had a Christmas get together that night um, at my stepmom. So uh, you can see how that kind of happens mathematically. And again, if you don't want to vary your eating window, you don't have to do that. If you want to vary your eating window, look one or two or both days ahead of the schedule right now to see how to make that all work. And, you know, it sounds a little bit um, mathematical, if you will, especially for somebody who's not necessarily a math lover like I am not. Um, but uh, when I think about some of the things that I've done in the past, and probably if you're an older gal like I am, you've probably done this too. Some of the things that we've done in the past where we have counted every calorie, we've counted, we weighed. Did anybody do the HCG where you actually weighed your chicken breast? and your green beans, and the, the size of your apple. You know, I think about all the great links we've gone to, that being able to adjust my window for get-togethers and holidays and birthdays is a small, small uh, price to pay to be able to continue living this lifestyle. Also, it's important if you have a busy schedule and busy social calendar that you do these things so that you make it your lifestyle. See, if we don't do these things and make it our lifestyle, then what we end up doing is saying, well, I just can't, I can't do it. So I may as well just forget it until after Christmas. Then we're back into the diet mentality, right? So I just want to equip you with the tools that you'll need to be able to do this well and to be able to make it a lifestyle um, because that is how we're going to put our bodies in fat burning um, frequently, you know, more often every day or almost every day 
Um, and so that will just really, really help a lot with the whole fat burning and lifestyle. Want to make this a lifestyle approach. I just, I think that when I'm in the Facebook groups and I hear people say, uh, well, I open my window too early. I guess they just want validation, but they'll say things like, I open my window. I, I couldn't resist um, a candy bar at the gas station. So uh guess I fell off the wagon today. You know, or they'll say, um, you know, Friday was a bust, so I'll see you on Monday and things like that. And I think that, uh, you know, we've carried that with us from our stringent dieting years, from those HCG, very low calorie, keto, very low carb. Um, and not that there's any, if you want to do any of those with intermittent fasting, that is no problem at all. But if you don't want to, and you want it to, ju and you just want to live the intermittent fasting lifestyle as your weight management protocol for life, then you have to make it your life. It's not going to be an on and off. It's not going to be a a kind of kind of this and kind of not. Um, for one thing, that never works. Right. We know that even with the other diet approaches, that that it doesn't work to kind of do something it doesn't work to sort of do something. So we have to instead, you know, be, be strong and keep on the fast, even when we are tempted to just throw in the towel and say we're not going to do it at all. Instead of doing that, we make it our lifestyle by adjusting our windows. So that's really why I recommend adjusting adjusting your window whenever you need to. So that is a little bit more about uh, what I've been learning and how I can help you learn those things as well. Last week I talked, that would have been in episode eight, I talked extensively about self-talk. And so in self-talk I taught uh, from Shad Helmstutter's book, um, What to Say When You Talk to Yourself, and that's in episode eight and the resources are also there. And I gave examples of four kinds of self-talk as applied to intermittent fasting. So I hope that you will go back, especially if you have a tendency to think badly of yourself or to think that you can't do this. If you have a tendency to have negative thoughts about yourself or to think that you cannot be successful, I hope you'll go back and listen to that and then maybe even order his book and read that book. Uh, today I'm going to be elaborating on the five second rule. I've talked about all of these things in bits and pieces, but I realized a few weeks ago that the best way that I should have done it is to talk about each thing, whether it was a physical distraction, which I taught about a couple weeks ago, the physical attributes, physical distractions to keep yourself in fasting mode and to uh, to uh, not yield to temptations to eat, um, whether it was the uh, self-talk, five-second rule, that how I really should have done them was one at a time rather than trying to lump them all together where I couldn't do them justice. So now I'm expanding on them, and then I'll wrap them back up again in a few weeks. So um, what I want to talk about now is the five-second rule. And this is a book by um, Mel Robbins, and she is, if you're on my Intermittent Fasting Journal Facebook group, you've heard me talk about her. I did, I did some things the other night on five tips on how to keep the fast, and this was one of them. Um, but she is the number one, uh, I don't know if it's North America or U.S. speaker right now on the speaker circuit for women, and um, not, not speaking for women, but number one female speaker, and uh, her book is called The Five Second Rule, and she uh, came about with, came about the rule of the five second rule, which, first of all, I have to say that I really, really love the fact that it's called the five second rule, and, um, you know, a lot of times we think of the five second rule, you know, we think about, you know, food is dropped on the floor, that we say, well, you can eat it. It's not tainted or whatever if it was on the floor fewer than five seconds. I don't know if you guys did that, but we did that at our house with our kids. Seven kids, four boys, okay? <laughs> and so we did, you know, the five-second rule is, oh, it's on, the, it's on the ground. Pick it up. Pick it up. Five, four, three, two. Okay, it's okay. Nothing happened to it. You don't have, you can still eat it. So that's the five-second rule uh, that most people think of when they hear the five-second rule. And she's talked about how it's kind of unfortunate that's got the same title, but I don't think it's unfortunate because I think it's really, really cool that it has the same title because we did have four boys. So we had the five-second rule for the floor, but we also had a 10-second rule for the ceiling. Yeah, so if it was on the floor for five seconds or fewer, you could still eat it. If it was on the ceiling for 10 seconds or fewer, you could still eat it. 
So <laughs> it's strange what you do when you have boys. Um, yeah, so we always had this, you know, five seconds on the floor, 10 seconds on the ceiling, and you can still eat it. So anyway, oh, I loved, loved having seven kids. They, um, it's, raising kids is the best thing in the world. So anyway, um, and teaching is next. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, with the her five second rule, she came up on this in a, in a in a like a, a very lay person's way. Um, she came up on it as just a coping mechanism for herself, and she didn't know anything about re the research or anything. Um, she had been like a TV personality, I believe. Um, maybe uh, an anchor, different things. She'd have different jobs, and but she, I don't believe her education is in psychology or anything, but she did not know what she was getting into when she created it. So she was unemployed and struggling, and she had trouble getting out of bed to go for job interviews and so forth because she was so distraught. So uh, she was watching this thing on television in bed one night, and she saw the... Uh, the space shuttle go up, um, sp rocket go up, and they went five, four, three, two, one. And she said to herself, tomorrow morning when I wake up, I am going to be like that rocket, and I am going to just jump out of bed just like that rocket took off at the end of five, four, three, two, one. I'm not going to think about it. I'm just going to jump up out of bed like that rocket. And so the next morning she woke up, and she said, five, four, three, two, one, and she sat up on the edge of the bed and got up, and she kept doing that and doing that and doing that, and uh, it yielded a lot of success for her, and then she started applying it to different areas of life, and then, oh, I, I can't, I think I might be frozen, okay, so then she uh, started researching it, um, well, actually, she did a TED Talk and kind of introduced it at the end of the TED Talk, um, and and it just caught on and people were excited about it. So then she started researching it and discovered that it is a scientific breakthrough, not a breakthrough, but a scientific application. And that is that that if you tell the brain to do something, if you do something before the brain has a chance to talk you out of it. And she applies this in the book called The Five Second Rule by Mel Robbins. And incidentally, that is available on YouTube with the author reading it and uh, the whole six hours. I really recommend you listen to it. But um, she uh, started re finding out that that type of thing, not the count, not the five second count countdown, um, but she started discovering that it was something that scientists and psychologists use to tell people to, to do something before the brain has a chance to change its mind. And that your brain always takes the path of least resistance, and of course, so do our bodies. You know, we always want the easy way. I mean, that's that's not not you're not a bad person for doing that. That's just how we are. And so, by doing the five second rule, you 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 five four three two one whatever, and you just do it before the brain has a chance to talk you out of it. And then she went on and lots, she has a lot of research in the book and she's done a lot more research about it and it's just phenomenal. And so it has spread across the world and is helping people with various things, you know, making phone calls that they don't want to make, uh, losing weight, getting up in the morning, not hitting snooze anymore, having self-control to exercise in the mornings. Um, and she even has accounts where people have been stopped from suicide with this method. Isn't that so cool? Can you imagine doing something that you bring to the masses quite accidentally, actually, and that actually saves people's lives? How cool is that? I'm just so inspired by her. And um, particularly, one particular story she tells about a man who was about to jump, and he said, five, four, three, two, one, got down, ran over, and told somebody that he was about to commit suicide. And they, I called the authorities and got help for him, and it, and it stopped him. So, oh, that gives me goosebumps. Anyway, it's so, 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 so cool. So um, I have been using this technique for various things. Um, I need to use it better for my snooze button <laughs> because I, what I do is I set my alarm for half an hour before so that I know that I have a half an hour to sleep um, extra. So I need to apply it to my sleeping, I guess. But uh, I've been using it for different areas to – to start a power hour, we have what we call power hours in my, on my team, on my uh, network marketing team, where we, you know, 
work solid for an hour, set the timer, turn off all distractions, and do a solid hour of work. It's also called time blocking from the one thing, um, which I used it years and years ago with homeschooling, but now it's a popular entrepreneur um, approach. So anyway, lots of ways that you can apply it to your life. Exercise, getting up, stopping eating. Um, uh, I will I will use it. I use it with intermittent fasting. So I just want to give you a couple of tools here. I know I'm running long again. Just want to give you a couple of tools on how I use it, and then you can use it however you want. But I think you'll really be inspired if you listen to her her teach about it. And in addition to the whole six hours of the book being read on YouTube, she's also all over YouTube with her TED Talks and with presentations about it that are shorter. If you just want to watch a 10-minute presentation about it, it is on there as well. And I'm sure she'll do a better job than I'm doing here explaining it to you since it's her baby, And um, although I'm pretty excited about it. So, all right, so the ways that you can use this with intermittent fasting, um, I use it uh, – when I close my window sometimes. So when, I'm, when my eating is window is over, and especially if I am closing my eating window early in the evening, and I know I have a lot of time left in the evening um, to, to not eat, because evening time is a hard time for a lot of people to stop eating, to not snack and so forth. I'm going to be talking about that in coming weeks about um, associations. Somebody in the intermittent fasting journal group just uh, posted some stuff about associations that I thought was fantastic today. So I'll be sharing that too. But um, the so when when it's when you're closing your window, sometimes I'll just go um, five, four, three, two, one, close window. Five, four, three, two, one, close window. Now I like to tap with it just because I like noise, I think, and I like rhythm. I'm a poet of sorts, and I used to be a drummer, and I'm a dancer. I, I just like rhythm. As a matter of fact, I don't know if you can hear my brace of I love noisy jewelry, and I just, I love noise. I, I had seven kids. I love noise. So I'll go, I'll either go five, four, three, two, one, close window, five, four, three, two, one, close window, where I tap my hand into my other hand, the side of my hand, or I'll do it on my Thighs, five, four, three, two, one, fast, win close window. Five, four, three, two, one, close window. Um, I will also use it to, um, man, I turned that down. I, I got a brand new phone, so I guess I didn't turn it off like I thought I did. I thought I, it, when I looked at it, it said mute. But um, So anyway, uh, I will also at times, if I'm in the middle of my fast, I'll actually tap on my stomach. I'll tap on my tummy, and I'll just go five, four, three, two, one, fast, whatever. So I use it for a countdown sometimes. So when I'm tempted to eat, I'll just tap my stomach, five, four, three, two, one. And then I'll just clap my hands together. Five, four, three, two, one, fast seven. Five, four, three, two, one, fast seven. And that just reminds me that I have seven hours left and I can do this thing. And I know that's not the same as our countdown to, for, uh, for, you know, stopping the brain from doing something, but it can stop you from eating. So you can use it as a mechanism to stop eating. You don't have to tap or anything. That's just what I do. You can just go five, four, three, two, one, fast seven, five, four, three, two, one, fast seven, or five, four, three, two, one, not a bite, five, four, three, two, one, not a bite, five, four, three, two, one, drink coffee, five, four, three, two, one, drink water. And, and it's just a, 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 a like a distraction, but I think with the verbal part of it and then the physical um, for me tapping the side of my hand under my other hand or on my thigh or my stomach I or on the steering wheel I do a lot when I'm driving when I'm driving because I uh, used to love to go through drive throughs and so that will be something that I'll do when I'm driving I'll hit my steering wheel five four three two one fast five five four three two one fast five and you know that just tells me that I have five hours remaining five four three two one fast two you know five four three two one um, success or something like that. So uh, that is another way to use it. Another way is um, when you, uh, you know, open your window, five, four, three, two, one, open window, five, four, three, two, one, open window. So sometimes people put different kinds of things in with their closing other window and their opening other window. And so you can use, you know, like a physical closing and opening, or you can use a five second rule, or you can use, um, you know, self-talk or whatever. So anyway, that is how I use the five-second rule. Um, I also use it in the mornings. I'll say five, four, three, two, one, tennis shoes. Five, four, three, two, one, tennis shoes. And, um, you know, she, when she does it, she goes five, four, three, two, one, action kind of thing. I use it. I say something else following it, such as tennis shoes, which means I'm going to go put on my shoes. I'm not stopping. I'm going to exercise. 
So anyway, I hope that that has been a help to you. I just want to give you anything that's helped me. I know that um, especially in the early days when you're still having hunger, um, it can really, really be hard. But even when you're when you're fat adapted and you're two or three weeks into IF and you maybe have a perfect 20 hour a week window, fasting window, and you really have it down, you can still need tools and techniques and distractions and um, soothing uh, mechanisms in place to help you. Uh, maybe not necessarily for hunger, but for like distractibility or for boredom um, or just because you want to eat. I mean, we all just, we want to eat and we want to eat all the time, you know. So um, uh, also if you're feeling sorry for yourself, you know, a lot of times we can say, well, you know, so-and-so gets to eat. No, she gets to eat, but I choose not to, right? It's not that I don't get to. It's that I choose not to because this is what I'm choosing for me, for my life. All right, so let me see now. It probably will be muted, but let me see here. If we can get some. There we go. I am going to close up this episode, episode nine, uh, week nine, and I'm going to talk about some Plexus products. So I'm going to let you go or let you stay. Thank you so much for joining me. So talk about supplementation. All right, and if you have not gone to YouTube, uh, Donna Reese, you can uh, watch that video uh, with that song. It's another distraction, singing to yourself, uh, another distraction that I use, or you can also go to the blog, DonnaReese.com, and it has the song as well as all the words. So anyway, uh, back to our uh, commercial now, so to speak, a message from our sponsor, and uh, I am a Plexus ambassador, so uh, I do use Plexus supplements as part of my fasting regimen. Um, the first few weeks of the podcast, during this portion, I talked about the weight loss products, which are um, Plexus Slim, the pink drink that you can drink for energy, for uh, carb cravings, for cravings. I had a three time a day diet coke addiction prior to Plexus and within two weeks it's completely gone. Um, good sleep, pain relief, uh, appetite suppressant, uh, really great for all of those things. And that's a little pink drink that you shake up like a lemonade. Um, and then the two accelerants. So uh, I use those in place of coffee. So Boost and Accelerator. I talked about those in the first two weeks and those are uh, natural caffeine that you can have with your um, with your uh, fast. And uh, a lot of people do like the black coffee, the teas that have caffeine. They think that it helps ward off their hunger. And so um, these two are uh, fat loss accelerators that also contain natural caffeine. All the Plexus products are natural. Last week I talked then, then a, bit, a few weeks ago then I talked about Block that has the uh, white kidney bean extract and it blocks up to 48% of the carbohydrates in your next meal. Uh, it is also, all the products are natural, so it's also plant-based and you can have that, you can take two of those before your meal to help block your carbs. It also helps you feel full quicker. Um, and now, uh, then two weeks ago, I started talking about Triplex and that is uh, clinically proven to help with weight loss and it is our three weight loss products and the show notes have our store and you can go to the store and you can read about the products you watch videos and so forth about any of the products that I mentioned on the show or you can contact me and I'll be happy to uh, do a video conference with you to explain more about the products or uh, to talk on the phone or just message me in Facebook and I can also answer your questions there. So Triplex is our three products uh, that are clinically proven to uh, aid in weight loss. Plexus Slim, which is a pink drink, BioCleanse, which is our magnesium supplement, and ProBio5, which is our probiotic and also has uh, uh, properties that cause it to destroy bad bacteria. So it gives you good and the digestive enzymes, uh, anti, anti um, properties, give, get rid of your bad bacteria. So, but today I want to talk a little bit about ease capsules. I know there's been a lot of discussion 
over in some of the Facebook, the big Facebook groups. I say the big Facebook groups because we're a small Facebook group still. Um, but uh, growing every day, and I really appreciate you guys joining me. Uh, but we have a product called Ease. And like I said, over in the other Facebook, the big Facebook groups, they're talking a lot about serapeptides and some of these anti-inflammatory products. And so that's why I thought this would be a good time to talk about Ease. Uh, over 76 million Americans struggle with discomfort, um, back problems, muscle tension, joint soreness, head pains, the list goes on. And it wasn't until I heard Melanie and Jen in their podcast, and I'm talking about over on um, uh, 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 delay, delay, don't deny in uh, Jen's Facebook group. But it wasn't until I heard them talking about serapeptides and how they got kind of got um, a lot of uh, drainage because it um, because the anti-inflammatory properties of serapeptides and how it affected uh, their sinuses. That was so interesting because we have so many people who take ease and one of the one of the components of it, one of the ingredients is serapeptides, who take it for all of those things I just listed, back pain, muscle tension, joint soreness, head pains, headaches. People take it for fibromyalgia. People take it for um, uh, allergies. They take it for um, inflammation, uh, like um, to make their to make swelling go down. Like in, you know, there you'll notice it a lot of times when people uh, will maybe they won't lose any weight, but they'll be on this product and their their faces will start uh, getting more narrow and uh, less swollen up. So one of the ingredients is the serapeptase, which helps reduce inflammation and pain. Another ingredient in this product is turmeric. And as I said, all the Plexus products are plant-based and they are all um, uh, natural. So the turmeric is a pungent spice and it's packed with anti-inflammatories and antioxidants. So it's proven, turmeric has been proven to fight off destructive free radicals cleanse the liver, protect the heart, boost mood, support the healthy brain function, and so forth. Now, usually when people take turmeric by itself, it's not effective because you need fat with the turmeric for it to work. So people are just like taking turmeric pills maybe in the morning without with oatmeal or something like that. They're not having it with fat. Um, but the turmeric uh, that uh, we have in ease is in the form of the green lipped muscle and that's an omega-3 fatty acid. So it's 100 times more effective in reducing inflammation than just a regular omega-3 supplement would be alone. So the, the products, the ingredients come together to really help with pain and inflammation. Um, I take two every morning and two every night. Uh, I don't have restless leg syndrome anymore with it. My husband takes several for his knee, um, his uh, meniscus and in his knee. So um, it's just an, an amazing supplement for a lot of uh, reasons. So uh, you can look that up in the store and see what you think. And um, I would love to help you with Plexus, but uh, anytime you want help. And I am also happy to answer your questions and help you with intermittent fasting anytime at the Intermittent Fasting Journal Facebook group and DonnaReach.com. I joined right in the fast Cause I want his night to pass The heat was on Rising to my fat Yeah, I was going strong And that is when my spark got hot I heard somebody say burn, burn, burn Passing on burn, burn, burn Body burn, burn that fat all out Burn, body burn, calcium burn, oh burn, body burn.